Hello and welcome to the DataMaker CSV Basics tutorial. In this video, you're going to be learning how to use DataMaker and CSV files, aka spreadsheets, to organize and import data into your project. So to install DataMaker, you're going to want to come to the ecosystem and search DataMaker. I already have it imported in my project, but if you don't, you'll be able to have a little get button next to it. So you can click that and then import it once it prompts you for import and then wait for Unity to compile it. Wait for this to turn green and the little Unity is compiling message to go away and then you'll have it. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. So first, we're going to need some data to actually import so we can show you how this works. A common way to use data in a game project would be to organize the classes of your characters or enemies. So for us, we can make something like enemy type, health, strength, and speed. These are the types of values that will be stored here in our data. And we'll just call this spreadsheet my game data. Okay, and then you can call the sheet down here enemy data. These values up here, these show us the type of data that we're going to be storing below them. So we want to say that this is actually a header. You can come over here to the corner where you have these two lines right here. On the column line, when your cursor turns into a little hand, you can click and drag that down one. So the first row is all above it. Now any values below this will be seen as the values and any above it are just seen as the header names. So for our enemy type, you could say this is the weak type. And then we have the mid type. Then you have the strong type and then you have the boss. OK, now in here, the weak might have a health of, let's say, three. The mid will have a health of six, strong will be 15, and the boss has 30. Okay, now the strength of the weak will be one. So, you know, you could say that that's how much damage is done when they hit the player. And the mid might do a damage of three, and the strong might do a damage of 10. And the boss might do a damage of 15. Now, the speed for the weak, maybe they're a little faster. They do less damage, so they're a little faster. Let's say their speed is something like 6. The mid does a little bit more damage, but it's a little slower. So we'll say that it has a speed of 3. The strong does a lot more damage, but it moves pretty slow. We'll say it's about as fast as the mid, so we'll say it's also 3. And the boss, it does a lot of damage, but it's actually pretty slow, so we'll say its speed is 2. So here are the values for your enemies. You have the type, their health, their strength, and their speed. Now what we want to do is we want to take all this data in to Unity and parse through it. So in the future, when we add any other values, having this spreadsheet is a much more organized way of keeping all of the data for an enemy, as opposed to having to go into all of your prefabs one by one and changing each of those values one by one going in and out of the prefab. It's a little easier to just go through a spreadsheet and see how all the numbers balance here in front of you. OK, so I'm going to come over to File, Download. And we're going to download comma separated values. That's what CSV stands for. I'm saving this file here directly in this folder for the project I'm currently working in. And you can see that the file name that Google automatically calls it it's my game data, which is the name of the document, and then it names it the sheet enemy data. So that's a nice way of keeping it organized, right? So hit save. Now when I come back to Unity, you can see the file here. It's a little text document. And the way it's all displayed here is comma separated values. So this text asset is something that we could read through and import into our game. So first things first, we're going to go to the ecosystem and search text. OK, and down here, you can see that we have an action we have an action called read text asset. So you're going to want to import that. I already have it imported in my project. So now on this empty game object, I'm going to add an FSM and I'm going to say read text asset. And I could drag and drop the asset in here and the content. We want to make it a variable and we're going to say the new variable is my enemy data. OK, so if I hit play, you'll see that 
text asset populated this string variable with our information. If I come over to variables, you can see it a little bit better. So in here, it looks like it's only just this, but if I move down, you can see that actually it has everything. Okay, our boss, weak, mid, and strong. Okay, as well as our header here. Okay, so now that we have that in a string variable, what we want is the read CSV action. The read CSV source will be our enemy data variable that we got up here. Then you're gonna check that it has a header. Okay, we were saying it does have a header. So we need to save a reference. This is actually just a string value that we're gonna use as a name. Now, it is kind of recommended to use a variable for this. It doesn't mean that the information is being stored in this variable. This variable is just meant as a name to name the reference. So, so, so you could, if you want to, click this to not use a variable and say my enemy data underscore ref. And that's what the reference is gonna be called and it'll store all the parsed information from this text asset. But it is recommended that you use a variable and say my enemy data underscore ref name and then right click on this, go to edit variable and then the value you use is what you can enter for the actual ref name. So you could say my enemy data underscore ref. Okay, so this is the actual name of it. But the reason we're storing it in a variable is just so if we ever wanted to do anything else with this reference, we could just select this variable and it'll enter it the same way. Because as we know, when you're trying to link information to string names, you have to be very careful about your string name because down here, right, the value, if I put a space in here, you might not see that there's a little space right here, right? I can highlight that and you might accidentally put it in or you might forget just one letter and it's like, oh, that looks pretty much like my enemy data, but you misspelled it by missing one letter. So having it in a variable is just a nice safe way of operating, okay? So now when I press play, there isn't much to see here. Okay, but there is something happening. Okay, the, this, this read SC, CSV is using that information. So the next thing to do, I'm gonna make another state after it's done doing those things. What we can do is if I type in CSV in here in our actions, you could see all these data maker CSV actions we have. Okay, so these come with data maker. When you import the data maker package, you have a whole variety of actions. These are the CSV ones. So for CSV, what you could do is get CSV fields by column key. So I'm gonna put this in here. The reference, we're gonna be saying it's our enemy data ref. And the key that we want, the key by column is basically just your header name. So for example, we could put in one of these values and it'll get all of the values from whichever one we select. So let's do enemy type first. I'm gonna go ahead and just select this and copy it, come over here and paste this in. Keys, like the reference, you might also want to use variables. You could do something like this key, okay? And then put it here. That way you don't mess up and type something else by accident. And the result that we're storing will be in a new variable. We'll call this enemy types. Let's add an S to that, right? So now when I hit play, you can see that our enemy types variable got the weak, mid, strong, and boss. Enemy type, got all these values, stored them in an array. Okay, so you could do this for the other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this a few times. And for the other ones, I'm just gonna write these in. We have health, strength, and speed. Okay, so we have health. Gonna make this enemy health. And then in this one, strength. New variable, enemy strengths. And honestly, I should probably call this enemy healths. Sounds kind of weird, huh? But stay consistent. So last one is speed and new variable, enemy speeds. And let's just make these outputs so we can see them in the inspector over here. Enemy, speed, strengths, and healths. Okay, and we'll even do enemy types. So when I press play, you can see now that we have all of our arrays populated with the information from our spreadsheet here.
Now you could do all sorts of things with this, but if they're all separate, how do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy actually. So if I wanted to, for example, create an empty and we'll call this our boss, right? Add an FSM to it, get FSM array, and we'll get it from the game object that has all our data, right? So ideally you have some like game manager or something that's like a global variable that it can reference. And then we'll get from the FSM enemy types. Okay. And we don't want to copy the values, but we're going to have an array called enemy types. And it's a string array. Okay. And then we'll have an array contains. And we're going to be checking the enemy types. And you can just put like, since this is the boss, you could just type in boss, or you can have a new variable called my enemy type, right? And you could make that like an input. So you could, theoretically, you could make some type of template. You could use the same template, all the same logic that we're using, except just change the enemy type. And you could say, my enemy type here for the input is boss, okay? And this array contains is gonna be looking for my enemy type, which is boss. And if it finds it, it gets its index. And we'll say my enemy type underscore index. And then what you could do is get FSM array item. So it uses that index to get from the game object that has all our data on it, right? To get something like the enemy healths and it's gonna use the index, my enemy type index. So the type is a string. Okay, we're gonna store the value as my health underscore string. The thing is, you have a mixed type of values here, kind of, right? Some of these could be floats, but some of these you might wanna have ints for some reason. And these are definitely strings. But the thing is, when you import all this data, it sees them all as strings. So when you get all the information, you're gonna to have to convert some of it. That's where we could use something like set float value. Since the enemy health is probably gonna be a float, right? We could have the float value as health, and we're setting it with a new variable we can convert from my health underscore string. Now, before I play this, I'm just gonna make sure that we're gonna give the game object here enough time to parse through all this. So our boss is going to have a start state with a small wait in it for a second, okay? It's gonna wait one second before it tries to get all its information, just so we give enough initialization time to all of this, okay? So our boss, I'm gonna hit play. So you can see the GitFSM array got the enemy types. It checked if that array of weak, mid, boss, weak, mid, strong, and boss contains my enemy type, which is boss, it did, and its index was three, right? So we have zero, one, two, and three, right? That's its index. And then it used that index to get the health string, right? So here, if boss is three, this is zero, one, two, and three. It looked at the health and said, use the same index, which is three, it's right here. So its health should be 30. And sure enough, the value it got was 30. But since it's a string, we needed to convert it. So our set float value, we have our health float variable. We wanted to convert that health string to a float value. So we have our health float variable has 30. And now this boss game object has a health of 30. And you could do that with the rest of the values. You could do it with your strength and speeds, and you could use that same convert option for ints instead. And you could even do things like, say like a special ability column. And this is stuff like AOE attack, or this one has like a flying attack, and this one has like a sneak attack, et cetera, et cetera, right? So these are all strings, and you can have your enemies get that string value, and then use that string value to say, enable an FSM with the same name, right? So you can have a state that says, okay, well, I'm gonna enable the special of whatever that is, right? So if the special is AOE, if we got this, 
then it can enable the FSM named that. So we turn all of them off at first, but when the game starts and it says, oh, my special is AoE, then this enable FSM will enable it. And now that enemy can use an AoE attack. This is just scratching the surface of how to use data in your games. There's a million and one ways to use it. A lot of people end up using it for stuff like localization, if you're gonna be translating your game into multiple languages. You can also use it for different classes of character types. Anything that you can imagine that uses large bodies of data for your game can use systems similar to this. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.